All right. For our first episode of Gecko Genetics, we're going to talk about the different types of subspecies. Basically, what we have here is your normal-looking wild-type uh, leopard gecko. Basically, these guys are a mutt between all of the different subspecies. Nobody knows exactly what subspecies were put into this, um, but they are basically the building block that we had for captive-bred leopard geckos. Whenever leopard geckos were imported uh, many years ago, nobody really took um, time to see where these leopard geckos were from or if they were subs what subspecies they were, and they basically just bred everything together. Um, I don't know whether they did this out of not knowing or whether it was just, you know, let's just produce leopard geckos. But that is how everything started. So, as I said before, this is a wild type or normal looking leopard gecko. Um, basically, all we're going to use, and we're actually going to use this book right here as a reference um, today uh, to show you where all of the uh, leopard gecko subspecies are from. Um, first off, uh, all the leopard gecko subspecies, um, if I can get to the page here real quick, um, are from one area of the world. And right here is the, I don't know if we can see here with needed to focus a little bit. Um, basically, we've got Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India, um, which is where all leopard gecko uh, subspecies and species are from. Um, as you can see, there is uh, this area right here with uh, Iraq, uh, Syria, Turkey, and Iran. Um, this is where the uh, Argumati comes from. Um, and then we also have a little area up here um, by uh, Turkmenistan, which is where the Turkmenicus actually comes from. Uh, this bigger area right here, uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, and part of India, is where the Macularis comes from and all the Macularis subspecies. So that uh, includes Macularis macularis, Macularis montanus, Macularis fasciolatus, and Macularis um, afghanicus. Um, there also is a couple other, like, not really described species um, that come from that area as well. Um, I believe the uh, Macularis smithi that uh, comes from there as well. Um, but nobody really works with any of that stuff. Um, in India, we have the uh, Fuscus and the Hardwicki. Um, the Hardwicki is an awesome looking animal, uh, which I'll show you a picture of here in a second, that is basically looks like a fat tail. Um, so this is where all of uh, the leopard gecko subspecies are actually from. Um, it is more of an arid, uh, like desert type environment. Um, but as you can see, this area of the world uh, hasn't been the friendliest. Um, so that is why a lot of these uh, subspecies um, and species have not been exported in a long, long time because of uh, war-torn countries. And it's just not worth uh, risking your life to uh, go grab these guys. Um, the animals out of India, have tr they, uh, they've, they've tried to get them um, both in Europe and in the U.S. Um, without any success. Um, so those uh, two subspecies are near impossible to get at this point. Um, which I will show you these two subspecies. Um, first off, uh, this is the uh, Fuscus, um, which is a very, very large specimen according to books. Um, it is the uh, largest member of the, the, um, the basically the leopard gecko family. Um, we also have the uh, hard wiki, which as you can see by the pictures, it actually does look like more like a fat tail. And it does come from the eastern part of uh, India, um, which, like I said before, uh, very, very hard to get, if not impossible. Um, the Fuscus actually comes from the western side of India. Um, these are the two Indian species that uh, are very, very hard to come by, if not impossible. Um, it was actually pretty hard to get the pictures for this book um, for, uh, for everybody to see as well. Um, the next uh, animals that we're going to talk about are the uh, Turkmenicus, um, which these guys are their own species. It's not, a sub or it's not like really a subspecies. Um, they can interbreed with uh, the uh, mutt leopard geckos, if you will, of um, that we have right now. Uh, this guy, or this girl, I should say, is a um, F1 Turkmenicus, 
Um, note the uh, larger head spots, um, the pastelish color, um, and the, uh, the lavender on the back. Uh, this girl is about uh, three years old now. Um, these guys actually don't ovulate until they're about two years of age. Uh, these are some baby Turkmanicus. Um, as you can see, they're a little bit more uh, almost max snow in appearance whenever they're smaller. Um, the yellow comes in with age. Uh, they also have uh, increased lavender, and uh, as you can see, the, uh, the head spots are more distinct as well. Um, that was the uh, Turkmanicus. Next up, we've got the uh, Macularis montanus. Um, as you can see, it's a heavier bodied animal. This is a female, uh, full grown. Um, she's about two and a half years old. The, um, as you can see by the uh, spotting, they're usually a little bit of a darker animal. Whenever they're young, they do kind of resemble a Max Snow as well. I don't have any baby uh, Montanas to show you right now, um, but uh, as soon as I get some, I will uh, show those to you. Um, as you can see, even the head's a little bit thicker. Um, just a thicker bodied animal, but these are not anything to do with the giant gene. Um, we have uh, bred these guys into our giant line to see if the animals were any bigger, and they weren't. Um, so this animal right here, the uh, Macularis montanus, does not make the animals larger than normal. Uh, next up, um, we have the Macularis uh, fasciolatus. Um, as you can see, more of a pastelish looking animal um, with uh, lavender that stays throughout the life. Um, compared to the Montanus, um, these guys are a longer bodied animal. Um, a lot of people have said that their fasciolatus are very vocal, which um, as babies, yes they are. Um, the other thing with these guys is that um, uh, the, like the lavender stays, um, the head's not as wide. Um, these guys are, uh, which this is one of my boys, um, even though uh, it's this, this, this animal right here is actually uh, about three years old. Um, it is an F1. Uh, the babies underneath are actually, uh, they would be F2 crossed to an F1. It's actually babies from the adult male, cro or a baby from the adult male crossed back to itself. Um, so these are pure baby uh, fasciolatus. Uh, next up, we have um, the Macularis afghanicus, which the Macularis afghanicus is the smaller of all the subspecies. Um, it does have a very, very distinct bold patterning to it, more yellow pigmentation as well. Um, this one is actually an F2, I believe, um, which uh, came from F1 parents that we um, still have to this day. Um, the cool part about these guys is the weird head pattern. I believe that uh, Halloween masks and stuff like that have come from uh, the uh, Afghanicus. Here's some baby Afghanicus. As you can see, they vary in color. Um, they they do grow very very quickly, um, although they don't get a uh, get to be a huge size. Um, but a very very cool bloodline to work with, just because of the bold patterning and the bold head pattern and the coloration. Uh, the last one that I'm going to show you um, is actually a wild from two wild caught uh, Pakistani parents. Um, as you can see, it's pretty actually crazy. Um, this guy uh, might be uh, more like a fasciolatus, or it might be more uh, just macularis macularis. Um, we'll see what it looks like whenever it gets a little bit bigger. It's kind of hard to tell whenever they're all babies. Uh, but as you can see, very, very pastelish, um, a lot of lavender coloration to them, and uh, as you can see, like, very, very wild. Um, so we're going to put this guy back, and as you can see from all of those, that if you kind of combine them all together, we get the uh, Mutz uh, Macularis um, Leopard Gecko, if you will, um, that has been basically just crossing all these different subspecies um, for years and years and years, and this is basically what uh, comes out of that. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, put them underneath, and uh, I'll try to get to them as quickly as possible. And uh, we'll work on some other genetics, uh, some dominant and uh, recessive genetics in our next episode.